Hello, 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 hello. Welcome to a video where I'm going to show you how to create a, I don't know, a snake skin um, animation thing, I guess. Well, whatever you want to call it. Um, just use your imagination and then see how you can actually use this uh, tutorial for something that's, you know, actually useful, like a building facade or something like that. Uh, either way, without any further ado, let's let's begin. So what you he see here on the screen are two things, like the the one on the left or on the right. Uh, this is like the my just notes, my definition. Don't worry about that. If I forget something, if I get uh, lost in my own thought, then I'll I'll come back here and I'll I'll double check, you know, what what what's going on, uh, so that we can continue with the tutorial. And here I have drawn a curve, right? And just so that we are in the same um, um, scale, uh, let me just tell you that the curve is basically um, 100 by 100 by 100 millimeters, right? So some, somewhere within that range, right? So I just took a, a NURBS curve and I just drew, you know, something like that and messed around with the control points of it a little bit. Right? Okay, so we have that. Now, to begin, I'm going to reference it in as a curve into Grasshopper. By the way, this is like an intermediate level tutorial, so I assume you know how to at least reference in a curve. If you don't, I suggest watching beginner tutorials before you start doing stuff like this. And then uh, for this curve, you might think that, okay, for a skin, you can do pipe. Right? You could do a pipe and then add like a hundred to it, uh, less than a hundred, and then, <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, and then just run something like, um, I don't know, diamond, uh, diamond panels, uh, 10, 10 by 10, or, or more uh, 10 in one direction and uh, 100 in the other nope that that's the wrong direction so you might be doing something like this right or might want to do something like this but there is a a, a, a problem and that problem is right here if i were to bake this out let me just bake it as a as a group and move this to the side. The issue is this seam right here. There shouldn't be a seam, right? These guys should be joined properly into one big happy family. And that that doesn't doesn't happen, right? So this doesn't work. Instead, we're going to make something that's going to be much faster in terms of calculation, but it's going to be uh, harder to do. We're going to build a mesh and we're going to use a Fibonacci sequence as well as the golden ratio, golden angle uh, to build that mesh. And if you don't know about the relation be between mesh topology, the Fibonacci sequence and the golden ratio, I really suggest you look it up, Google it, because uh, I will not be explaining that here. Uh, in this tutorial, because it is a tutorial, I don't want to make it into a, into a lecture. That would be way too too much, right? So I will assume that you at least know what a Fibonacci sequence is and that you know what um, the golden angle is and at least have a slight resemblance of, of how, how these things relate to uh, diamond, diamond grid mesh topology. Let, let's say it like that. I forgot the name of it. It's not philanthropy. <laughs> it's something else. Does, doesn't matter. Okay, let, let's just do it. Um, I will create a bunch of perpendicular frames. Perp frames. Not perp frame, perp frames. Like that. And by a bunch, I mean like a, a thousand. No, let, let's do 500. Uh, I'll, I'll do 500 for now. Like that. And one thing is that if this count is 500, you can see that the output is going to be 501, 
perpendicular frames, and I hate that. It always gives me one more, one extra output, or one extra frame. So I'm going to right-click on the N input, go to Expression, and type in X minus 1. Hit OK. Now you can see this, this little doodad here that says that something's happening with the input. And now the output is going to be 500 because 500 comes in here, gets translated to 499, this automatically adds plus 1, so we are left with 500 again. Okay, good. We have a crap ton of perpendicular frames now. Now, on each of these perpendicular frames, I want to create a point, right? Uh, a cylindrical point. So I'll uh, immediately do that. Point cylindrical. Like that. And I want each of those points to rotate around the center point of each of these frames by a number that keeps increasing. Uh, by an angle that keeps increasing. And that angle is 137.508. This is the angle in degrees. So we're dealing with degrees. So I'm going to right click on point cylindrical, A input, and choose degrees here. There we go. And as I said, it needs to keep increasing, right? So we will have series of numbers series of numbers, and we'll start with zero. So first point doesn't get rotated. The second point is going to be rotated by this number. Third point is going to be rotated by a uh, number that is this times two, and then so on, right? So our step size of the series is 137508, and how many? Uh, numbers in these series do we want? Well, we want 500 because we have 500 frames, thus we have 500 points, right? So I'm just going to connect 500 to the count. If I show you the panel, the output of this, you can see that it starts from zero and then keeps increasing. Oh, I guess even a better way of how to show you would be to just connect this to the angle right and then draw um interpolate uh interpolated curve through those points and let's hide the frames for now you can see this uh coil that wraps and you you can kind of see this coil that wraps around the the the, the curve Right? So that's that's how they work. Um, there's still one, one more thing that I want to do with the point cylindrical. I want to describe the radius, and I guess we'll do same. something like 11, uh, maybe less. Let, let's do like 8. Yeah, something like that. Just to, you know, describe the, the, the radius of, of the pipe. Um, and that's that's it for now. We have a bunch of points that go in this kind of spiral because they keep getting rotated 137.508 uh, degrees with every plane. By the way, um, if you're confused, um, golden angle, the golden angle G can therefore be numerically approximated in degrees as 137508. That's where I'm getting this, this number four, uh, from. That's why I'm telling you to look up uh, golden angle, uh, Fibonacci sequence, the sequence, mesh topology, golden ratio, um, mesh, whatever this is. Anyway, anyway everything that's related to that. Um, too much to, to kind of compress into a quick tutorial. Okay, so we have a bunch of points now. <clears throat> now to actually uh, create a mesh topology from these points, we will be using a Fibonacci sequence. So Fibonacci sequence is um, one, two, so one plus two is three, then two plus three is five, then three plus five is eight, then 8 plus 5 is 13, then 13 plus 8 is 
21, and so on. That's the Fibonacci sequence. <clears throat> so we'll be picking two numbers from the sequence, and we'll be using that to uh, to, to create a to topology, or, or rather we'll be using three numbers from the Fibonacci sequence, don't worry about that, uh, to create a topology of the mesh. <clears throat> so which three numbers, right? Because the Fibonacci sequence is infinite. Well, I don't remember, so let me check what I used. I used 5 and 13. We'll be using 5. What? And 13? Why, why is it 13? Why is it not 8? Are we skipping over 8? I'm sorry, I don't remember why, why I used... Uh, why I skipped over over 8. We'll see. We'll see. We'll use these as, as sliders, so... Um, we will see how it changes. Right, so one Fibonacci sequence number is going to be 5, and the other one is going to be, apparently, 13. We'll see. Um, so now the way that we work with this is... I need to take the first point. Okay, list item. The first point from the whole damn list. Then we take um, the fifth point, or point with index 5 from the list. Then we take um, the 13th point, or, or point index 13, and we, then we add 5 and 13 to get the last point which is going to be uh, 18, apparently, which is not a Fibonacci sequence number. Okay. And this technically should give us the, 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 the topology of the mesh. I'm, I'm sorry that I, my, my mind is going places because I, I'm, I keep thinking, why did I change this from 8 to 13 right before the tutorial? And I can't remember. We'll see. Um, and then once, so these four points create a quad, right? And you can kind of see them here, uh, right here. One, two, three, four. They will create a quad. And then as we go through this, uh, they will keep creating um, more and more quads. So we need to keep shifting the list by one point, right? Uh, so what we can do, and let me just check how I did it here. Um, count. Okay. So here, uh, what, what we can do is instead of working with points, we'll just work with the, with the text data. And I will just say, if we have series of numbers, and I'm just deleting everything and just keeping these, these two numbers here, 5 and 13, if we have series of numbers that counts until uh, 500, right? So I'm using the same, uh, same, same slider from, from, from before, right? Uh, that counts counts from uh, to to 500, or rather from zero to 499. Uh, then we can shift that list by five, right? So so then we get. Yeah, come on, give me, give me. Then we get five, six, blah blah blah. Right. When, when here it starts counting from from zero, here it starts counting from five because we're shifting the list by five. And then we can shift the list by 13. Right? So it starts counting from 13. And then right between these two guys, I will add up these numbers and shift the list with the added number. Uh, addition. There we go. This and this. So that's 18. And we're shifting the list again. Now with the 
uh, with the added one. So here it starts counting from 18, right? So we get um, the, the, the full shifted list. Okay, that's good. Then we can do merge, or rather before we do merge, we will graft uh, the points. So we'll use graft. Uh, so we will separate the points into their own little data branch, right? Each point receives its own branch so that we can extract, or when we merge them, we get groups of four points in each single branch. That should help us with uh, sorting things out properly. Graft, graft, graft. And then we connect everything to merge. Just like that. Okay, so the output is complete garbage. Uh, and the reason for that is because here the addresses uh, of the data tree are not correct. So I'm just going to right click on the graft tree T outputs and choose to simplify. In doing so, we are cleaning up the addresses. And when we clean up the, the, the addresses, uh, they should start matching up because basically we didn't do any manipulation to the data structure so that it would have additional branching in the data structure. Uh, so there is no reason why just simple simplification of the data tree shouldn't clean everything up perfectly for us. Yeah, perfect. So now we have four points in each branch. Not four points, but you get the idea. <laughs> uh, four, four numbers in, in each data branch. Okay, now with those, uh, those four numbers, we can create a mesh quad. Mesh quad. Create a mesh quad. Ah, do we really need to do that? Okay, sure. List item. We need to separate them. So I'm using list item and I'm going to separate by zooming in and clicking this plus sign. I'm going to separate the output into four uh, outputs. So uh, point number one, point number two, number three, number four, and connect them like so. Right up. And then we get basically instructions on how to create quads for a mesh, right? So these are indices of the points of these points that should be used to create quads. And I'm going to put all of them into one list by right clicking the F output and choosing to flatten. Yay, one big happy family. Now, from these points, I'm going to say, ah, let's just do a point tool, our point node, connect it, and drag it all the way next to the mesh quad somewhere here, just to, to have things a little bit cleaner. And then uh, we will just simply construct the mesh from points with the mesh quads. Voila, well, almost voila. There's a little bit of a problem. The problem is that the ends also meet, and that's because when, um, let me explain this, we need coffee. <coughs> so we're shifting the list, right? We're shifting the list to five. Guess what happens with vertices or with points that are at the end of the list? Instead of using those, it shifts the list back into the front of the list, right? So that's why this weird behavior here happens. It's because of this wrapping, wrapping of values here. Everything here is set to true. It needs to be set to false. So I'll just uh, toggle, Boolean toggle, false, and connect it here, here, and here. Now it works. Well, kinda. This will start complaining. And it, this complains because... Um, uh, why? Ah, yes. Because uh, since we're not reaching or, or we're not bridging 
the gap between the end and the uh, the, the, the front of, of the pipe of the list sorry um, it runs out of vertices when we're pushing pushing and pushing the, the list with shift list right so at the end of the data tree uh, we get branches that don't have four points in them right so it suddenly starts freaking out because here with list item we are trying to give it four points right so, and it can't get them so we need to clean this up uh this this data tree up a little bit and only use the branches which actually have four vertices uh, or or four um, items in in the branch right so i'm just going to say three or, or we can just do list length and just do list length like that. It gives us a number and I ask it, is it equal equality? Is it equal to four? Is it equal to four? And that if the answer is yes, then a color pattern. Well, pattern. If the answer is yes, then don't do anything with it. If the answer is no, then yo, just delete it. They delete the whole damn branch, right? So here, uh, some branches are going to be deleted. Well, not quite. The items in the branches are going to be deleted. Um, so the last thing that I need to do is do just tree clean, uh, clean tree, clean tree, clean tree. Connect the tree with the some branches that are completely empty to the T input here. And then here under empty, remove empty, we right click and we choose set boolean and we choose true. And that's it. Now, as I connect instead of the merge, if I connect the cleaned tree into the list item input, the construct mesh will not complain anymore. Okay, time to play with this. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. Let's disable, oh, nope, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Let's disable the preview of everything except the final mesh. This is how it looks like. Let's just do custom preview real quick. Nope, custom preview, let's watch. Um, let's, Blue, maybe. Do you like blue? I like blue. Let's do blue. Something like that. And this is the, the topology that we get. Pretty neat, huh? Let's see what happens if we use 8 instead of 13. Huh, 8 also works. So why did I use 13? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> 13 also looks cool. What if we use 21? Yeah, let's not use 21. And you can see that uh, other numbers don't, don't work that well. Uh, we do need to use Fibonacci numbers. 5 should work though. Wait. Oh no, 5 is here. So 3 and 5 should work. 3 and then 5. That also works, right? As long as you use Fibonacci numbers, it's going to work. Uh, so we do five and what was it? 13, right? Oh my God, stop beeping. Okay. So this is, this was the hardest part by far about the, 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 the whole tutorial. Everything else is going to be quite simple. So for the um, for the animation itself, if you want to, you know, animate the turning, uh, you can do that quite quite easily. Uh, first of all, let's do count. Let's increase the count to a thousand, let's say, and then radius, picking it up a bit, something like this. Then for the 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 the, the, the frames. All we need to do to make this turn is rotate the perpendicular frames. Rotate. Um, plane. 
Rotate plane. There we go. Frames connect to the P input. A, we need to right click it and choose degrees. We use 0 0.360. Connect that. P connects to P. And that's it. Now we will have the ability to rotate the planes. <laughs> cool, huh? Okay. Um, with this done, with this done, we can um, make it pretty. So let's make it pretty. So the, uh, the things that I've done in the for the video, for the small uh, little clip that you saw at the start, was I just moved a few vertices around. I think it was just one. And I guess I'll show you that. But this is the moment from where you, you're on your own, basically. You can get um, these boundaries. Just get the face boundaries out of it. This is basically a bunch of polylines. And then from these polylines, you can do any kind of facade that you want, right? Whatever, whatever you want, you can, you can do. Because all of these are quads, meaning that you can um, um, scale them uh, to their center points and, then, and so on. I will not be doing that. I guess I can show you one thing. We reverse picture frame. Voila. Mesh thicken. Nope. And then Cat Mole Clark subdivision. Level two. Now oh, we can even go level three, I guess. Big that out. Take a look at it. Pretty neat, huh? So that, that's that's one way of how we can do a pretty interesting uh, skin. But uh, it's not about that. We're making the, 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 we can snake, snake, snake skin. So we're not doing that. Go back to shade it. Back here, we have our mesh. Um, I am going to get the boundary. Uh, face boundary, face boundary uh, for each uh, mesh face, like that. And I'm going to get the discontinuities from the face boundary, like that. And so basically I get four points, right? Uh, four points for each face or corner points for each face. Okay, good. Then I can um, separate them with list item. I can separate them. Bam, bam, bam. So now they are, you know, same four points, only that I have them as separate inputs. And what would happen if I, right from the start, where I have the curve, let's create a curve component right here, connect it, and I'll drag it all the way to the... Let's disable preview of this one. I'll drag it all the way to the end, right? So it's the same curve, right? The same initial curve that we have. Um, let's just do it with a really... These days, if you right click on the on a wire, uh, or not right click, double click on the wire, you, you get a relay which helps you clean up the, the definition. It's kind of nice. And what if I say that we will merge everything back one 
two, three, but the point number four is going to be moved. It's going to be moved, and it's going to be moved uh, al away from the spine, from from this curve, away from the spine of the snake. Right, so I need to get from this point, I need the closest point. Uh, curve CP, curve closest point. So from this point, from the last one, I need the closest point to the curve like that. And maybe let's let's just drag it all the way, drag it all the way down here so that you can see better. I wonder if my webcam is not blocking anything. Well, let's, we'll see. Um, I'm sorry if it is. <laughs> Maybe I should. Wait. There we go. I'm gonna be smaller now. Um, so we get the point, like the closest point on the curve from our fourth point of each face. And I can create a vector uh, between the two points. So the vector starts at the curve, at the spine, and it ends at the fourth point, right? So we basically create a bunch of vectors here. I can even show them to you. Uh, vector display, that's the vector we displayed from here. Um, hide a lot of things, please. Because this is getting a little bit too much. These are the vectors um, that, that, that we're using, right? They're all going out, going away from the spine. Um, and if I give that vector an amplitude, and I say... You know, just move it by a little, by one. And connect that to my move. Just like that. Then the fourth point of each... Um, the fourth point of each face should be moved away. Should be peeled away a little bit from the... The thing. <laughs> you know, <laughs> from the thing. Um, let's see if that actually works. Uh, construct mesh. Let's see if, how, how it looks like. Looks pretty neat. Ain't gonna lie. Looks pretty nice. So you can see that we're basically peeling away. Uh, let's do two. We're basically peeling away. Uh, one, one vertice. Let's do it with more precision. Uh, and let's do it with a uh, custom preview turned on, just so that the shading is, is correct. We, okay, good. So we have that. I will give it like, uh, Something like this for now. And then from here on out, I guess we want to have a little bit of scaling involved. Uh, so I'm going to say, right before we construct the mesh, can we scale these uh, groups of four points? Can we scale them along their center point? By the way, quick tip, if you have a point cloud, even if it's three or four points, if you have those points, if you average, if you average them out, you will get the center point of that point cloud. And as you can see, the center point of that point cloud is literally the center point of the polygon, of each polygon. Um, so we, we average it to get the center point, and I think 1.2 scaling should be good enough. So we just make the points move a little bit further away and then we connect it to construct mesh and now they're all intersecting. Don't worry. If this is 
set to yeah let's do 1.2 for now then let's do catmull clark subdivision once like that i guess or do we thicken it up first let's thicken it up first uh mesh thicken if you don't have mesh thicken there is offset mesh there's plenty of options of how to give thickness to to the mesh so the distance uh let's just do 0 0.5 for now we'll see about the distance so we're thickening it thickening it up and then I'm going to hit it with a Catmull Clark subdivision. Let's look at it. And this is how it looks like. E ain't gonna lie. Don't don't I don't love it. <laughs> I, I, I don't love it. So in between these two steps, I'm going to hit it with a Catmull Clark subdivision once more like that but i'm going to say that the, the 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 smoothing shouldn't be smooth so i'm right clicking on the s input shouldn't be smooth but it should be fixed so i'm basically giving it more polygons to work with so that the next smoothing step doesn't smooth it out as much and now it's it's better now I think that looks much, much better. Yeah, we can we can play with this for sure. But this is what we what what we come up with, what we came up with. Let's look at the rendered preview. Yeah, I think that looks nice. Don't you agree? Let's change the angle. Oh, it's uh, it's becoming a little bit laggy, but that's that's expected, right? That's expected. Looks still uh, still looks pretty good. <clears throat> and that's it. That's our definition. Now, if you want to create an animation, all you need to do is well, let, let's mess around with the with the curve a bit. Let's see how this um, how this thing behaves. Like that, you go there, and you twist a little bit more. There we go. Uh, you can go down, actually. No need to climb up. Um, this goes up. Both of these move. I'm just tying a knot, <laughs> literally. There we go. Then you go down oh th these are gonna start intersecting so uh this bad boy needs to go down while this is gonna go uh no it's not gonna go up i need one more point there ah whatever good enough i'm gonna have it like that <clears throat> then you can do either um either a V-Ray animation. I have plenty of tutorials about that in the on the YouTube channel, so no, no, I'm not gonna explain how to do that. Just check out those videos. Or, we don't need those as well anymore. <clears throat> or you can do just a straight up, uh, not Rhino, uh, I'm gonna get there. Just, just give me a second. Grasshopper animation with with the default uh, Rhino view capture to file preview. For instance, Evangelion red preset for the preview. If you don't know how to do that, well, I have a tutorial for you. Uh, check out the. I don't remember the the the, the name of my freaking video 
I think it's uh, animation setup for Rhino. Or Rhino animation setup. Or Grasshopper animation setup. It's gonna have a red thumbnail. Just scroll down until you see a red thumbnail, you'll see this one. <laughs> and how to, to make this kind of a preview. Okay, uh, once you've done that, um, to, to actually just render out the animation, you right click on the slider. Let's go back to zero. Right click on the slider. Hit edit, not edit, no, you hit animate. It's going to animate, by the way, from the camera, which you, you're looking at. Uh, I'll hit browse and just create a new folder. Okay, I'm going to save into the new folder. Why is this not? Hello? Oh, it's not responding. Cool. Um, so now it's going to be saving it to the new folder. It's going to be, I'm going to use 1920 by 1080. And my full animation is going to be, um, let's say, 700 frames. Or, I mean, if you're doing 30 frames per second, so then 300 frames is going to be 10 seconds to revolve full 360 degrees. Um, 10 seconds is too fast, so that's going to be 20 seconds. Or uh, with 600 frames, I think that's that's reasonable. And then we just hit OK. And now it's saving the the the, the images. That's it. That's literally it. We're done. Thank you for watching. The files are going to be available for the Patreon supporters, as per usual. If you subscribe, then uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, my subscriber number will increase, which feeds my ego and makes sure that I will upload more videos like this in the future, because I like when big number be bigger. Um, besides that, Patreon. Yeah, already mentioned that. I have some uh, grasshopper tutorials planned. I have some um, non-Rhino related things planned. There's an um, update for the architectural project that uh, we're working on. Uh, it, the update is coming up pretty shortly. And there's going to be live streams. There's going to be live streams uh, either next week or week after that. We will see. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.